Problem 433 in Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. This time we want to make a matrix that can be used to measure the component of spin in any arbitrary direction in space. The direction that we're interested in is called r hat, and it's the unit vector that we know from Cartesian coordinates, given by the angles theta and phi. Finding the component of spin that's in the r direction can be done by taking the inner product between the spin vector and the r vector. Writing it out, you get something like this, and I encourage you to just um, multiply all the scalars inside of the matrices and um, add them all together to find one single matrix, call that A. And so there you have the matrix operator that's used to find the component of spin in an arbitrary direction. And now we move on to finding the eigenvalues of that matrix. That of course can be done by solving the secular equation, which is where you solve for lambda in this equation. And since what we have here is a 2 by 2 a matrix operator, it's simply a matter of solving a quadratic equation. In the end, you'll find the eigenvalues to be the familiar h bar over 2 and minus h bar over 2. Now, to find the eigenspinners, we can imagine that we have a state with the components alpha and beta, and we can plug that state into an eigen equation using the operator that we found and the eigenvalues that we found. Now at this point I need to postulate some trigonometric identities that are good to know for solving this problem. And those are the following, and we need to keep them in mind when we're solving for alpha and beta. Alpha can simply be read off when setting up the linear system of equations, and beta can be derived from the equation involving alpha. So now let's start by using the positive eigenvalue, and now we need to make use of those uh, trigonometric identities that I showed you. And after simplifying, we get this expression for beta. And we now have to use the fact that the state has to be normalized. That of course means that the absolute square of alpha plus the absolute square of beta has to be one. And plugging in beta to that equation, we need to take the absolute square of beta, which is more or less straightforward. Remember that the uh, complex exponential here is on the unit circle, so that has the absolute square of one. When you've done this, you'll find that alpha has to be cosine of theta over two, and therefore beta has to be the complex exponential times a sine of theta over two. So that's what we get for the positive eigenvalue. And for the negative eigenvalues, you need to use the same logic, except that you have to use the other trigonometric identity, namely that one plus cosine of theta equals two times cosine squared of theta over two. And at this point, you'll have both the alpha and beta components for both of the eigenvalues. So you will have found both of the eigenvalues and both of the eigenspinners.